Story building over. That was shot number two. The snipers moved the shot in a different time. Make sure you got eyes on those windows. We got casualties on the ground. We got movement, same window. I need to know if anybody goes into that building. I got about a tenth of a second. Right or wrong, sometimes you gotta take your best guess. He tried to kill an Iraqi insurgent, but in a split-second mistake, this army sniper accidentally killed Medina Wassel's police officer, outraging the town's citizens. Hey, cover him, cover him. It's not Iraq, but another day at the National Training Center at Fort Irwin, California. On 1,200 square miles of desert, the U.S. Army has recreated the worst day in Iraq. We just keep pushing more, keep pushing more, keep throwing more stuff at them. When it looks like they can't take any more, we throw a little bit extra at them. The National Training Center was formed in 1981 when U.S. soldiers were training for the Cold War to fight against Russian tanks and tank-on-tank -tank battles. Then they trained to fight against the Iraqi Republican Army. Today, they're training to fight insurgents in the villages of Iraq. Hollywood special effects, 12 make-believe Iraqi villages, and Arabic-speaking citizens all add to the realism of this very intense training. I've had some interesting mornings. We had a mortar attack last night early in the morning, and the first thing when I woke up, I thought I was back in Mosul. It's part tactical and part sensitivity training. Soldiers have to be ready for anything. Snipers, mortar attacks, and IEDs, the homemade bombs that have claimed thousands of lives. The battles here are a high-tech game of laser tag. Each weapon is outfitted with a laser. Soldiers, buildings, even vehicles have electronic targets attached to them. And each soldier carries a casualty card. It will tell them if they live or die. And if uh, no treatment is started within 10 minutes, it becomes dead. 200 Iraqi Americans live and work in these villages. For two weeks at a time, they call these converted storage units home. We bring our coffee, sugar, cook. We cook everything like food and uh, get the meat ready for cooking it for some kind of soup or rice, just like Iraqi food. That's what we cook all the time. They only speak Arabic around the soldiers. We can't show you most of their faces for fear their relatives still living in Iraq will be killed by insurgents. There are a lot of young soldiers that they haven't had a opportunity to see Iraqis or interact with them. Specialist Dan Smith is from Sacramento and a graduate of Natomas High School. He's been to Iraq and now uses his experience to help train troops coming through Fort Irwin. When we were over in Iraq, we had to learn about Muslim, the Muslim religion, and we had to understand, you know, like how they treat their people, uh, what they can eat, what they can do why they dress the way they do. It was a big culture shock. Today's soldier must be ready for a handshake or a hand grenade and be ready to react to either. It's an about face for soldiers who fought the first Gulf War. They put us in the desert and they, they pointed us in, you know, towards Baghdad and said, hey, roll out. If it's in front of you and it's shooting, kill it. And now you go into the city and it's first make, make friends, treat everybody with dignity and respect until they don't deserve it anymore. Good or bad, it's all documented by a fake Arab TV station. The lead story today, U.S. troops kill Iraqi police officer. Why are you guys here? You're supposed to be here to protect Iraqis, but obviously you're not. You're killing Iraqis. We have to be aggressive because I'm presenting al Arabia news. So usually um, Arabic reporters, they're very aggressive with the soldiers. The desert, the people, the scenarios, they're all very real with one exception. Here, soldiers learn from mistakes. In Iraq, they die. You can never be good enough in this business. And the fact is, for any soldier that gets wounded uh, or killed, and we go back and redouble our efforts after every one of those funerals and say, how, how could we have kept this from happening? These soldiers deserve world-class training. At Fort Irwin, California, Brian Hickey, KCRA, three reports.